Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. We are here to talk about the Washington Gives platform and particularly the peer to peer fundraising tools that your nonprofit will have access to on this platform. So hopefully many of you attended the training earlier this week that was focused primarily on peer to peer fundraising strategy. We'll cover just a very brief bit of strategy on today's call. Today, we're really primarily focused on helping your nonprofit understand, make best use of the tools that you have access to on the platform. If you're looking for more help with fundraising strategy, uh, make sure to check out the recording from the previous fundraising training. Today's agenda will start with a quick overview on peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Then I will highlight some of the key features that you'll have access to on the platform just as a bit of a preview for you. I'll spend some time actually walking through the platform live to show you what a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page looks like, where you can access this functionality in your nonprofit's account, et cetera. We'll end with a few common FAQs that our team typically gets as it relates to peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And we will make space at the end to answer any questions that you all may have about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising on the platform. In case you have just joined, there is a Q&A um, button that you have access to on the Zoom control panel. Please feel free to type in any questions as we go throughout the training today, and I'll answer those questions at the end. Uh, and another note, this session is being recorded, so you will be able to access and review the recording uh, later. So first, and again, just very briefly, since there was another training that dug deep on peer-to-peer -peer fundraising strategy, I always like to just start off with a quick context setting about why peer-to-peer -peer is really so valuable for you as a nonprofit it can feel daunting sometimes to feel the need to add more to your fundraising strategy when you might already be strapped for resources. But there are so many key benefits to peer to peer fundraising, especially as a part of a giving day campaign. And that's why that's why we encourage it so much. Uh, the first and one of the most obvious is, of course, donor acquisition. By activating ambassadors that go out into the community on behalf of your nonprofit, you are expanding your potential donor pool exponentially. You will have access to your existing donor database, their email addresses to contact them, but you don't have their extended network uh, in your database. And so by activating individuals that are willing to spread the word about your cause, you're putting your organization's name, mission in front of new donors. Gives you more boots on the ground. Uh, and obviously, we know many nonprofits are strapped for resources, staff, and anything that you can do to expand the bandwidth of your nonprofit, as well as your fundraising resources in particular, has the ability to really drive additional support for your nonprofit. So, getting more people out there on your behalf, spreading the word, talking about the value of your work and asking for support on your behalf. And the last piece, which is valuable, but sometimes overlooked as one of the key benefits of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is the ability that it has to strengthen the relationship with the actual peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser themselves. As we look at donor engagement and stewardship as a journey, Somebody may start attending an event, making a donation. This next step of joining almost an inner circle of your nonprofit by activating and engaging in this way and creating a fundraiser, telling their story on your behalf, you now have a much deeper, stronger relationship with that peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser that you can continue to build on as you look at stewardship of your donor base as a whole. Something I don't have listed on the screen here, but another one of the key benefits that I like to encourage nonprofits to consider is the, the wealth of additional stories that your team will have access to share about the value of your work. 
your marketing team, your fundraising team has, I'm sure, all kinds of great information, copy that you've used in the past on your website and blogs, past emails and how you talk about your work. But hearing an individual who has either benefited directly from your mission or they have a relationship with somebody who has benefited directly from your organization, it shifts the perspective of your messaging in a way that can be really uh, helpful uh, to a donor considering making a donation to your organization. It can really deepen the personalization for new donors. And so by activating these peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, you're adding to your database, if you will, of personal stories that you can then share and reuse in other contexts outside of just the message that they've posted on their fundraising page. So when it comes to actually making use of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising on the Washington Gives platform, it's a fairly straightforward process. Step one is identify supporters that will make sense to be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser and ask them to do this for you. And I believe the earlier training covers a little bit more detail on how you can identify the right types of individuals that will be a good fit for this. But that's step one to identify the right supporters. Step two, they can go to your organization's profile page on the platform and click a big fundraise button that they'll see there. That button takes them through a couple steps of a fundraiser creation wizard that will help them set up and publish their fundraising page. They then have the ability to customize that page, tell the story about why they're fundraising, why they believe in your cause. And that ties back to what I was just mentioning in terms of one of those key benefits. As they add content to their page, that then becomes additional content that you can share and repackage in other ways in the future. They can set a goal for their fundraising page, either a dollar goal or a donor goal, and then they can start sharing, spreading the word. So they'll ask their friends and family members to support. They'll send the direct link to their fundraising page that they've created. All of the donations that they raise will show up in your organization's donations report. So you'll have access to all the donor data. The funds will all be dispersed directly to your nonprofit. And any dollars they raise or any donors that they engage will all roll up into your organization's totals for um, give big. So it's a great way to amplify the traditional fundraising efforts that your team might already be doing uh, and add extra channels that will hopefully be driving uh, increased fundraising support for your nonprofit. There are two key types of pages that we're gonna talk about today that your nonprofit can consider using and or encouraging uh, use of for your peer-to-peer -peer campaign. The first is the simpler, more straightforward, straightforward option, and that's an individual fundraising page. So this is the traditional, uh, if somebody wants to start a birthday fundraiser on behalf of your nonprofit, for example, they create an individual page one-to-one, -one, they customize that page, and any funds they raise get sent right to your organization. A team fundraising page still brings together individual fundraising pages. They're still made up of individual pages, but it is a group of those pages together all under one larger umbrella. So it gives you the ability to bring people together, manage peer-to-peer -to -peer efforts in one central campaign if you anticipate having a small group of individuals that want to work together in their peer-to-peer -peer fundraising efforts. And one of the most classic examples of this type of campaign uh, that can be very well utilized by almost any nonprofit participating in a giving day is a board fundraising competition. So just about every nonprofit is going to have a board of directors that you can hopefully rely on. Not all boards are as involved and engaged in fundraising as we might like them to be, but you should have a board at your disposal that you could consider bringing into a campaign like this. 
So I'll actually show this campaign live when we get onto the platform and talk a little bit more about the functionality with a team fundraising campaign. But the core benefit, the core value to a campaign like this is that it can make it easier for a new fundraiser, somebody that isn't super comfortable or familiar, they maybe haven't fundraised before, by bringing them together as a group rather than just having their own standalone page, it can make them feel like they're a part of something bigger, make them feel like they're not trying to figure it out on their own. You, with a team fundraising page, you have the ability to create some friendly competition. There's a leaderboard you'll have access to on the page. You can do fun things like add additional incentives. You know, the board member that raises the most, for example, can get something or the board member that raises the least, has to bring food to the next meeting or something like that. Um, but this group structure gives you the ability to take advantage of some of those additional incentives that might make it more engaging for your fundraisers. A key feature you have access to with a team fundraising campaign uh, is the ability to create a page template. So you can make it really easy for all of your board members to more quickly create and publish their fundraising page by pre-filling a lot of the uh, features for them. Uh, and finally, as I mentioned, you can manage your peer-to-peer -peer efforts in one place. So rather than uh, just managing five separate individual pages, you can access reporting, metrics, et cetera, at this team fundraising level and quickly uh, get a good sense of the engagement and results across your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So I wanna talk a little bit, like I mentioned, uh, preview some of the tools that we'll see once I flip into the actual platform itself. The first is where you can access all of these peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools. It's gonna be in your nonprofits dashboard the fourth item down on the dashboard is fundraising tools. Clicking on that fundraising tools link will open up a page like you see here. The two features that I wanna call out that you'll want to pay attention to as it relates to peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is the first one, campaigns. This is where you can manage any existing fundraisers and create new ones. And the last one on this screen is fundraiser templates. That's where as I mentioned uh, in relation to the team fundraising campaign just a minute ago, you have the ability to pre-create a template page for any of your fundraisers. And again, streamline that onboarding process for them, get them prepped with some additional copy content, et cetera, to make their onboarding as easy as possible. So in that campaign screen that I mentioned, key things that you can do here, create a new campaign, download reports of past campaigns or active campaigns. Uh, you can see the key stats right here on the screen. Who's fundraising for you? When did they start their page? How much have they raised? You can also uh, email the fundraiser creator right through the platform. So if you want to, uh, which we absolutely encourage you to engage with these fundraisers throughout the campaign, send them tips, encouragement, a toolkit, resources, whatever you can do to keep them engaged. Um, through the little three dots that you see on the far side, you'll have the ability to email them. You can also hide or delete any old campaigns. So um, if after this year's campaign, you wanna hide uh, any fundraisers that you don't want to be accessible anymore or remove them, you have the ability to manage all of that here in your campaign screen. As for the fundraiser template, which I've mentioned a couple of times, this is really one of the most important things that we're gonna encourage nonprofits to take the time to build out if you plan to have peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, because just a little bit of initial effort on the part of your nonprofit can really cut down on the time and energy that an actual peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser will need to take when they decide to sign up for your nonprofit. So you can pre-fill their title, you can set a goal for them, you can add an image and descriptive text about your nonprofit, about your mission, so that when they come in, they still have the ability to customize their page if they want, if they wanna add a personal photo or personal story, they certainly can. 
but they are not left in the position of trying to produce content that talks about the core mission of your work. You guys have that information readily available, and you also know how you like to speak about the mission of your organization. So it gives you the ability to set, set that fundraiser up for success, help their page look better in the end, and reduce the workload that they will have to take so that when they click on uh, the fundraise button on your page, within two or three clicks, they could have a complete published fundraising page that's ready to accept donations. So with that, I'm going to take a break from the deck here and actually open up the platform so that I can show you some of these tools that we've been talking about live, give you a better feel for what's possible. So I am here on an individual fundraiser page. This is the first type of page that I mentioned. You'll see here, this is Beth's fundraising page for the Animal Humane Society. I have an image that I've added, a short story. I've set a goal for my campaign. Primary call to action, of course, is to make a donation. Although you'll see there are social share buttons as available as well for me to easily share my campaign. This campaign happens to be a part of a larger team, which is why you'll see this indication here. If it's not part of a team, that section will just go away uh, and the individual fundraising page outside of that looks the exact same, whether or not is a part of an existing team. You can see a timeline that shows individuals that have supported my campaign, unless of course those individuals have requested to remain hidden from the public and then their name or donation amount won't show here. And then here's sort of my story section where I've been able to tell um, my story about why I'm fundraising for this organization. You'll see here there's a matching grant available. Um, we did a previous training last week that went fully in depth on matching grants. So I'm not gonna focus too much on that today, but just to mention, that any peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser does have the ability to post a match on their page if they'd like to, or if your nonprofit has a matching grant that you have posted as a part of that campaign, that matching grant will be visible on any fundraiser pages that are active for your nonprofit so that donors to those pages will have the insight into seeing that your nonprofit overall has offered a match. So now that I've shown you a quick visitor view, I'm gonna open up the editing tools just to give you a feel for, quick feel for the editing experience. It's all gonna be on page editing. So the fundraiser can click on the field, make the changes that they'd like to make. Um, they have the ability to add an image or a video to their cover section right here, down in the editing tools below. They have the ability to uh, embed photos and videos right in line in their text. So they can always choose to have additional uh, photos and videos if they'd like. Uh, they have uh, lots of formatting options here to tell hopefully a dynamic story about why they're participating in this event, why they're fundraising for your nonprofit. <clears throat> One other uh, feature to call out is the goal, as I mentioned, your fundraisers will have the ability to set either a dollar goal, $500, or a donor goal, for example, if they are hoping to reach 100 donors to give to their campaign. So depending on uh, their focus, their interest, uh, they can choose to set a goal that matches that. They have access to donations reports so that they can see who is giving to their campaign. Of course, they won't see any information or donor data for donors giving to your nonprofit outside of their campaign, but they will have access to the donor data for their campaign directly, as well as some other opportunities to customize <clears throat> the social share experience, the end of their URL, et cetera, all available in the settings there. So this is an individual fundraising page. The next example page I wanted to show you is the team fundraising page that I referenced earlier. So on this page as well, you'll see Beth's fundraiser that we just looked at is a part of this larger team campaign. 
Um, so clicking on any of these links in the leaderboard will take you to those individual fundraising pages. But the team campaign is really about bringing all of these efforts together in one place. So the metrics here that you're seeing at the top are shown collectively what all of these board members have contributed together, what they've been able to bring together. There's an option to set a goal for this page as well. For the leaderboard, you can choose whether the number of donors is important to you, you rather rank by the number of dollars, or if you are not as interested in encouraging competition, you just wanna list in alphabetical order by name, you're welcome to do that as well. So you have some options in the leaderboard there, but that can be a really fun way to help spark that either friendly competition or at the very least just engagement among your participating peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers together. You'll have a story section on this page as well to be able to talk about this larger campaign as a group. Why has this group of individuals chosen to come together and fundraise on your behalf? And again, a donor timeline here that's gonna be rolling up all of the gifts made to any of the participating fundraisers on your page. To pop into edit mode, I won't go into every field here, uh, but again, it's all gonna be on page editing. Anywhere that you see these pencil, mic, pencil mark icons or these other icons here, that's your indicator uh, that clicking on that will allow you to update the number or the metrics uh, that are uh, visible on your page, update the title of your page. The story section here, similar user experience. What you see is what you get editor where you can have formatting, photos, videos, links, et cetera. So it's really easy to build out uh, a nice looking page. There are not very many required fields on this page. If you don't want to have a background banner image, as you can see here with the animals, you don't have to. Um, we always encourage a logo and at least a quick description in this section here, um, but you don't have to, um, it won't take a lot of time to build out a nice looking fundraising page here. And again, clicking on any one of these links in the leaderboard will take you to that individual's fundraiser page. Uh, there are some additional reporting uh, management tools that you'll have access to here. Um, so you can access a listing of all the campaigns that have been started on behalf of your organization as a part of this event. You can uh, view by participant directly. Um, you can invite new members to join your team. You can send an email to specific individuals that are on your team or of course, download any of these reports. You have access to a full donations report that's going to, uh, again, collectively show you gifts made to, across all of your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, have the ability to set up a matching grant. Two other key features to mention, the fundraiser template, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, for any team that you create, you can create a specific template that will be available to people that join that team. And finally, uh, you do have the ability for a general fund. So if, for example, you do have a fundraiser that you've created and uh, there are five or six individuals that are fundraising on behalf of your organization, you still have the choice whether you'd like to turn on a general fund, meaning that when donors come to your page, they would have the option to either make a donation to a specific fundraiser that is a part of your team, or they could choose just to give right to the general fund that will go to your nonprofit. So in case there are any donors that don't have a particular affiliation with one of your board members or one of the volunteers, it just provides an additional outlet for individuals that might want to give um, a general donation to your organization. So those are the two key types of campaigns uh, that you might encourage supporters to create for you. Again, in your dashboard, that fourth item down, fundraising tools is where you're gonna access all of these uh, things that we've been talking about here, your campaigns, as well as your fundraiser templates. So for campaigns, <clears throat> you got a preview of this in the um, deck that I showed earlier. 
But this campaigns area is really where you're gonna manage any of your active peer-to-peer -peer efforts. So if you'd like to create a new campaign, there's a button in the upper right-hand corner here where you can click create new campaign. This will walk you through the process of creating either an individual fundraiser, or if you're looking to create a team campaign, you'll click on this other fundraising solutions option here, and then you'll be walked through uh, how, what the options are to create your team. Uh, next to that create new campaign button, uh, you'll see the ability to download. This will download a report of all the information that's accessible in this table below, which as I mentioned, this table is really your place to manage past and active fundraisers started on behalf of your organization. So you can see right here in the table, some key data, the name of the campaign, along with a link to that campaign page, the type of campaign that's been started, how much they've been raised, um, who started it, when did they create it. Um, <clears throat> if you open up, as I mentioned, the three little dots in the very far right uh, of the row here, you can see the actual campaign page. You can hide a page if it's an old page and you don't want it to be visible anymore. You can message the fundraiser directly or you can delete the page if it's an old page or uh, a page that you don't want to have uh, actively fundraising for your organization, uh, you can remove that page. So key information is visible here on screen for you. When you download a CSV report, you'll have lots more detail included in that CSV download, including the email address of the fundraiser, um, more detail about their performance, donors, dollars, their, et cetera. Um, so you're just seeing quick preview on screen and a download will give you even more information. You have the ability to search by an individual's name or a campaign title, uh, and you can also filter uh, if you're looking to uh, just see visible campaigns, just see older campaigns, or if you're like if you'd like to filter by um, the owner of the campaign, an admin would of course be anybody inside your organization that has started either an individual fundraiser page or a team uh, or peer. That's going to be somebody outside of your organization that has created a page on behalf of your organization. So lots of great tools available here to uh, manage any of your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising efforts. And then, as I mentioned earlier, fundraiser templates, definitely important feature if you plan to have some individuals uh, that will be creating a fundraiser for your organization. So this page already has a template created. When you come to your page, there likely won't be one created yet. So you can click on this button in the upper right-hand corner, click create, and you'll walk through the process of creating a template page. Once you create that template page, you can come back, you can delete that template in the future, you can edit that template, or you can copy a direct link to that template if you'd like to send that link directly to specific individuals that you know are going to want to start a fundraiser on your behalf, you can fast track, streamline the onboarding for them by sending them a direct link to use this template. By default, when an individual comes to your page, and I'm popped back over into the um, profile page for your organization, so you'll see the two primary calls to action available on your profile page are donate and fundraise. When somebody clicks on this button to fundraise, if your organization has set up a template, that template will automatically be available for them to use. They don't have to go out of their way to request to use it. It will be the default as they go to create their page. So again, with just a few clicks here, they will be taken to a, a page. And I'll just show you while we're here build their fundraiser. I'm gonna now be dropped on a fundraising page that has been created for me from the template. I see that notification that, hey, there was a template provided. So some of this has already been pre-filled for you, but you can go ahead and edit if you'd like. So you'll now see the required fields needed to publish my page are done. 
I could go ahead and just click publish and be done. Uh, again, I have the ability to edit if I'd like, uh, but with just a few clicks there, I could be ready to publish my page. The one thing you didn't see me do in that flow is because I was already logged in, I didn't need to take a step to log in or create an account. Of course, if it's an individual's first time accessing the platform, if they're not logged in, they will need to create a user account in order to create a fundraising page so that they can come back, log in, and manage that page in the future. Um, but that, that creation wizard will walk them through that as the only additional step beyond what you just saw. So to open up the fundraiser template and actually show you a little bit more of the editing experience, you got a preview within the team page, uh, but you don't actually have to create a team campaign to have access to a template. So if you don't think you'll have enough individuals participating that you want to create a team campaign, you do still have the ability to create a fundraiser template that's available to individuals who start a fundraiser right from your profile page. So you have the ability to create a title for them. In this case, the title that's been created is done so in a format that will encourage the fundraiser to actually insert their name here. For example, you're welcome to do it like that or leave it more generic so they don't have to change anything. You can set a goal for them. You can add your own image. When you upload an image, you can upload an image from any one of these sources or you can include a video as well. You can add a short story, very quick, one sentence, why is this individual fundraising for your nonprofit? And then a larger, longer description. And again, same editing tools that the individual would see when they're building their page, you have access when you're building the template. And the real value here, especially in the story section is enter that mission-based information about your nonprofit so that your fundraisers aren't trying to reproduce that and um, come up with their own version of how to describe the work that they do, uh, that your nonprofit does. Uh, the value really is in them telling their personal story of how they've been impacted, how they've been affected, um, but you still have the ability to add your own crafted language about your nonprofit and your nonprofit's mission. You can add your logo, link back to your nonprofit's website, uh, whatever is helpful um, as you want to uh, make this process easier for your fundraisers. So with that, I'm going to jump back into the presentation and answer a couple of quick FAQs and then open it up to anybody uh, that might have questions. So please feel free to type them in the Q&A if you haven't typed in any yet. A couple of key questions uh, that we often get in our customer support. Will peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers be able to see who donated to their page? Yes, in two different ways. One is that donor timeline that you saw on the page. So that's visible to the public. Again, if a donor requests that their name or their donation amount be hidden when they're making their gift, their information will not show on their timeline. But either way, uh, that information will be available in the donation report that the fundraiser has access to. And at the organization level as well, along with the report that you have access to, to see all of the peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, all of their donations will flow up into your donations report. So you'll have the ability within your donations report to see donations made to your nonprofit, no matter what page was given to. And of course, there will be data within the report, additional columns of information that help you reference that this donation came from this fundraiser page as opposed to coming from your main profile page uh, or another uh, avenue that you might have used. As I mentioned, peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers do have the ability to create a matching grant on their page. Team fundraising pages also have the ability to have a match across the team campaign. And if you are setting up a match at your nonprofit's level, you can choose whether or not you want that matching grant to be available for campaigns below your nonprofit. So if you'd like for donors to peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser pages to be able to see and 
contribute against the match that you're offering across your organization, you have the ability to set that up when you are creating your matching grant. Peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers also have the ability to post an offline donation to their page if they'd like. So uh, through that donations report that they have access to, they will have the ability if somebody uh, gives them funds by check or cash, they can post that on their page. Of course, any offline funds that they receive, they will need to work with your organization directly to get those funds over to your nonprofit because offline donations won't be processed through the platform, but they do have the ability to add those to their page to make sure their metrics reflect their full fundraising efforts. Um, and any uh, donations made to peer-to-peer -peer fundraising pages will, as I mentioned earlier, roll up into your organization's total for the campaign. So in your leaderboard totals, on the totals uh, metrics available on your profile page, um, a great way to boost and amplify your overall fundraising success is by having a number of individuals help contribute to that success uh, by driving their own uh, donors and dollars, which will um, roll up into your totals. So hopefully, helpful um, refresher. We covered most of that in today's training, but so those are some of the most common questions that we get. So we just wanted to call them out specifically. And now uh, with just a few minutes left, I will see if we have any questions that have come in through uh, throughout the training. Uh, just so you know, if you do have questions when you are uh, getting into the platform, building out your campaign, please feel free to email wagives at mightycause.com to access the customer support team. And they'll be happy to help walk you through Um, okay, question here about uh, fun matching grants on fundraising pages. Looks like this was asked slightly earlier on in the training, um, but yes, you can create a separate matching grant for the team and or a separate matching grant for an individual fundraiser page. So that's all optional. Um, and then the last question is, are we as the nonprofit able to edit the fundraiser page after it has been published? Uh, and the answer is yes, you will be able to make changes to a fundraiser's page once it is published. It's their page uh, to own and uh, operate and edit and build, uh, but you do have the ability to make a change to that page uh, if there's content on that page that, um, that you would like to change or if they need help. But again, individual fundraisers are also welcome to email wagives at mightycause.com if they want additional help with their campaign. So that's all the questions that we've had come in. So I'm gonna go ahead and end today's training here. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck with your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising as a part of the Give Big campaign. Please feel free to email wagives at mightycause.com with any questions. And again, this recording will be posted uh, and available uh, after today's session. Thanks so much, everyone.